You may not think of a web browser as a security tool, but today I'm going to talk about just that. I'm going to tell you about this new thing called the Secure Enterprise Browser. I'll even give a demo of Palo Alto Network's Prisma Access Browser. While the types of security technologies we might be used to are things like endpoint detection and response, network firewalls, usually something that's like an agent on a machine or some kind of networking device, a browser really could be a really good place to also have a lot of security controls. Now I know it's a new idea, so it just might be a little bit strange, but if you think about it, it really is a really, really good place to apply a lot of your controls. I mean, where do you spend most of your time? probably in the browser when you're using a computer, right? I mean, think about it. How much of your time on a computer is in a browser? More than 50%? Probably for a lot of you, more than 80% or even more than that? So that's probably a good place to actually apply those security controls. Additionally, now you're going to have access to last mile security controls. What I mean by last mile is controls actually on the data itself within the browser, such as things that I'll show in a few minutes, which are like, you can't copy and paste data out of the browser from a sensitive application. It's not really something you can do on a networking device. And even an endpoint agent would have a lot of difficulty doing that without getting a lot of access into your specific application. So really applying those controls in the browser gives you the best capability to actually keep your users from performing uh, actions with that data that you don't want them to. But really, I think the number one reason that the browser is the best place to apply these controls is decryption. A lot of these capabilities that you're going to have, such as the intrusion prevention system capabilities, the DNS uh, security capabilities, or sandboxing for you know potential zero days and malicious files, is really, really getting more and more difficult to do on network security devices because encryption is getting better and better and harder and harder to uh, intercept to be able to actually decrypt that traffic on those network security devices. So sure, you can try to bypass decryption on a lot of uh, um, websites that you're already familiar with, but if you actually apply those same controls, those same um, that same level of inspection within the browser, now you don't even have to worry about decryption. Why? Because that traffic is already decrypted when it's in the browser. It, if it was encrypted, you wouldn't be able to see it. Right, So those interactions that can be captured by the browser are captured already decrypted. So they're already not encrypted. The uh, inspection is able to be done on the plain text session, which just really makes the browser such a really, really good place for network security, as well as those last mile capabilities that I talked about. Now that I've explained a little bit about why the browser is a really good place for these types of security capabilities, let me show you a few examples in Palo Alto Network's secure enterprise browser solution called Prisma Access Browser. This is the interface you'll see with Prisma Access Browser. As you can tell, it's very similar to Google Chrome, which is not surprising because it's based on the Chromium browser, just like Google Chrome is, as well as Microsoft Edge. So if you've used those browsers, it's going to be pretty easy for you to use Prisma Access Browser, and there really shouldn't be too much of a learning curve within using it. As you can see, the bookmarks here are the same, the way of creating a new tab, as well as even the tools and settings here in the top right look almost exactly the same as Google Chrome. If you use Google Chrome before, or if you've used even Microsoft Edge before, it should be pretty easy for you to learn how to use Prisma Access Browser, at least as a user. Another thing I'll point out is that installing Prisma Access Browser is exactly like installing any other browser or really any other software on your system. So pretty much anyone can do that. Most, most people have installed a browser on their computer before. So you should, they should know how to install Prisma Access Browser once you give them the file to install that application. Now I'll show you some of the security features within Prisma Access Browser going beyond just usability. So for that, I will click this <clears throat> Prisma Access Browser teaser. And here you'll see an example corporation with some example sensitive data that the organization wants to control. So the organization doesn't want someone to be able to take this data and take it elsewhere. One way that someone might do that is by trying to copy and paste the data into a different application. For example, if I try to highlight this data here and copy it and then paste it into Notepad, 
you'll see here that it says that pasting this data from Prisma Access Browser is prohibited. So the Prisma Access Browser itself actually keeps you from being able to copy this data and paste it into a different application, which is one way that it protects data. Another way that it protects data is by preventing you from downloading files that may contain that sensitive data. Here, for example, there is a report that could be downloaded on this application normally, but Prisma Access Browser is set up to keep you from downloading this report. So when I try to download it, <clears throat> you'll see here that it says file download is not allowed and that the Palo Alto Networks policy blocks it. Similarly, someone might attempt to print out this data to take it somewhere, again, where you don't want them to. You want them to be able to view it, but you don't want them to be able to copy and paste it anywhere. You don't want them to be able to download it, and you don't want them to be able to print it. So if they tried to print it, here, there's going to be another pop-up showing that printing this page is not allowed. It's just another policy here that keeps the data protected. One thing that's a lot more obvious when you open this page is that <clears throat> there is this watermark here on the back, which just allows the organization to apply their own signature to the page to show that this is the property of that organization and, not the, uh, and, and doesn't allow someone to go in and pretend like it is their data or their page. As well, there is this masking here where this data, the report ID, the email address, and phone number are actually fuzzed out. So this particular user, when they're accessing this data from Prisma Access Browser, are not able to see those particular pieces of data. They're protected uh, from seeing them. So they're, they're not allowed to see it because it's not allowed by policy. So those are just a few ways that data is protected within Prisma Access Browser, but there are other protections. For example, you may not someone want someone to be able to access developer tools. Developer tools is great for website developers to allow them to debug and see how things can go into the back end, but it's also a way for someone to be able to take advantage of a website. So if I go here and I try to open developer tools by going to more tools and then developer tools, you'll see that it's blocked. Developer tools is not allowed on this page. And as you can see here, it says that it's to prevent the data from getting lost or stolen. Finally, there are general protections within Prisma Access Browser just to keep people safe online in general. They shouldn't be accessing malicious sites, whether that's because they received it from a phishing email and they're seeing that link and that link was sent to them as something that they should ac that they could access that has uh, some kind of malicious file that they would download or it's just a malicious site that they really shouldn't be accessing because it's a source of malware and other malicious activity. Also, that malicious site could be a link in a non-malicious web page such as here where we're allowed access to this web page but we're not allowed access to this link right here which is, as you can see through this logo right here of the skull and crossbones. This is a malicious link right here. So when I click it, you're going to see that this is a suspected phishing attempt and it's blocking my access to this malicious website. These are just a few of the many capabilities of Prisma Access Browser, but I'm really just trying to show you a few of the features so that you can understand why uh, security in the browser makes sense and what types of security controls could exist in the browser and how these might benefit you and your organization. Now you've seen some of the capabilities of a secure enterprise browser, especially some of those last mile capabilities. But there are really many, many more capabilities within a secure enterprise browser and many, many more controls that you can apply in order to secure your data and applications. And I've also shown you why the browser really could be a good place to apply a lot of controls that you might be used to applying elsewhere, such as your endpoint technologies or your network security devices. But I'm curious what you think. Do you think that the browser is the new place where security controls can be applied? Is this something that could replace some of these network technologies or endpoint technologies? Or is this just something that we need to do in addition to the technologies that we already have in place? Let me know your thoughts and I look forward to seeing you in my next video.